In this final video of our SQL Basics series related to the information schema, we are going to be wrapping up this series by looking at a practical example of where we can use information schema for comparison purposes. So we've discussed scripting, and we've discussed even documenting, and we've discussed getting meta information about objects, and we're going to be applying getting meta information for comparing different databases. So the following demo uses Microsoft SQL Server, and some relational databases may not support these information schema objects. So you'll want to find where to get information, meta information, I should say, in whatever um, relational database system that you use, and then from there you can make uh, appropriate comparisons. So in this video, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be comparing the information schema dot columns on one database to another. And in our use case here, we are going to assume that the goal is that we want to these tables to match identically. So let's suppose that the tables were copied, and this is a use case that I see quite a bit with this, where you can use this and get this information very quickly. So we have tables that were copied, but as we see, um, there is a column missing here, and we're gonna look at how we can do that as our uh, final example. So applying some of the concepts we've used in this SQL Basics series, you might remember that we, in terms of we introduced left joins, left joins do a match, and a non-match, right? So they return columns that line up and also columns that don't return up on the basis of the left part of the join. In this case, we can see that is going to be the T1. That's going to be the table name and the column name. This is the join condition. So it's going to look for where it matches and where it doesn't. So in this table names, based on the Debbie database, we see this table has, and this is called the copy table, I should say. So this is, would be our source. Uh, table would actually be better source table or source columns here, and this would be the destination and the destination columns. So we see in this copy column, there are four columns, but we notice when we look at the destination that there are only three. And this is the use usefulness of left joins here, right? Like an inner join would just return these three, and then we wouldn't see the difference. We would think, oh, everything matches, but that's actually not correct. Right? So what we're doing here is we're applying several of the concepts we've learned. We're looking at this information schema dot columns, and we're looking at that compared to another database, and we're seeing where there's a difference. So more than likely, and for the record, I see this in a lot of environments where let's say we want to have a clone of another table. It's sometimes you'll find this out, but the developer actually scripted the table manually and then removed a column, or they did an edit or whatnot. And so this is a very quick way to determine what's the difference between the two, especially if you uh, try to do any type of insert. And let's say the destination table is just going to take all data, it doesn't have any constraints or anything. And then you see that there's a missing column or whatnot, this can be very useful. Um, and then one of the things to note, we're using this three part naming, which you can do with information schema. So you'll notice we're first of all specifying the databases, the database, I mean, then we're specifying the schema and then we're specifying the object, right? It's the same thing here. We're left joining this on dummy. If I were to remove this, I would not get correct information. For instance, if I were to query this, um, long button here, this is going to come back incorrect. And the reason is it's going to execute the context here. Now, of course, this is uh, SSMS uh, dependent here, SQL Server Management Studio dependent here, I should say. But that's one of the reasons why I'm specifying the databases because I need to join against that. So what we see here is an application of several of the concepts we've learned so far in the series. And this is one of the uh, usefulnesses of these information uh, schema. So in this case, we're looking at columns, we could be looking at tables, we could be looking at constraints, we could be looking at sequences, etc. So these objects are very useful for scripting, they're very useful for getting information, they're very useful for comparing environments, etc. Very useful. But we want to still, as you'll see, we're applying some of the other concepts we've learned, right? When we're trying to compare things, we need to be using things like left joins or whatnot. If we're trying to document things, we need to understand how constraints work. Um, it's like, okay, so where are all the primary keys and the foreign keys, etc. like such like that. And then of course, if it comes to scripting objects, we need to know how to script things dynamically where we're still using it in a very secure way. Keep in mind, we do not ever want to be passing that off to users. We want to make sure that all of the permissions are tied down as well. 